So we're looking at a, a higher level consideration of electromagnetic induction, but just before we get into that we want to recap um, the basics. So we have a magnetic field uh, going into the page, if I can draw my X's correctly, and magnetic st field strength B, and we have a wire of some sort which is being passed through the magnetic field, cuts it perpendicularly, so it's travelling at a particular velocity, um, and it has a particular length L. And um, we know that the voltage across this um, wire as it moves through is um, a function of the magnetic field strength times the velocity that you're moving it through times by the length of the wire that's actually passing through it. So that is, and we can use, um, to find out which end becomes positive and which end becomes negative, we can use um, some of our right hand rules. I consider usually, if I imagine a positive charge, to find out which direction will be positive. Um, your right hand rule says that conventional current is moving in that direction, magnetic field into the board, so the slap will be upwards. So there'll be a force experienced by a positive charge upwards. That means positive charges, if they could move, would collect at this end, and negative charges would collect at this end. Um, so of course it's the electrons that are moving in the other direction, but a positive charge collects there, so that tells us what's going on. Anyway, that's electromagnetic induction at the basic level. Um, we've got this other idea of magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is uh, the magnetic field strength times by the area. So you might have a loop, and it's the, um, the area that is uh, with the magnetic field lines going through. So obviously the stronger the magnetic field strength, the more lines are going through, and the larger the surface area, um, the more lines are going through. So that, that covers our idea of flux. You can do this as a flow rate kind of thing for waters, uh, water flowing in a river, um, you can consider flux for electric fields, you can consider flux for gravitational fields or any fields. Um, but in this case we're talking about magnetic flux because it's a magnetic field. Now uh, we can also rearrange this for another useful um, concept and talk about the flux density, the magnetic flux density, which is another way of looking at um, the magnetic field strength. Now I forgot to mention before the units for flux are Weber's. WB is the symbol, Weber's. So another unit, instead of magnetic field strength being Tesla's, you could call it Weber's per meter squared. So, which is just taking the units from our um, equation right there, from the flux units and the area, which is meter squared. Um, so that's another useful uh, bit there. Now, um, because the step up from this is going from a single wire to a loop, um, we we find it more convenient to um, use this idea of flux to, to find the induced voltage. So this time the induced voltage is uh, the change in the magnetic flux going through that loop over the time. The change in time, this is a derivative, you get your calculus going and um, you find that there is a use for some of that boring maths. Um, sorry maths teachers, but it can be very boring and you know it. In any case, um, there's a few features of this equation that we need to uh, look at. So this basically says the change in the flux, so the change in the amount of field lines going through that loop um, as a function of time, so the rate, how fast that's working, um, will give rise to the voltage. So uh, if we have a, I'm just going to use the same diagram above because it's easier, if we have a loop like this, we have the flux uh, passing through it there, and there's a couple of ways you can change the amount of flux going through. You could rotate, so you could put this loop on an axis and then rotate it around, sort of like a 3D drawing there, like a coin spinning. And as you rotate it, um, you will have, uh, as it goes more sideways, you'll have less uh, area cutting through that um, through that loop. So you're, you're going from more to less, so there's a change in the flux, and the speed that you spin it, uh, can give rise to your time. That's one way. The other way is if this magnetic field um, is a giant electromagnetic uh, electromagnet, 
you could just adjust the strength of that and then you'd end up with the loop staying in the same place but the less lines going uh, between them and yeah there's, there's a few other options where you could take this whole loop and just make the loop move into and out of the field in fact maybe not through the field because once it's inside the field the loop is not um, the flux inside is not changing Okay, now, so that, that covers Faraday's law nicely. There's one factor, though, that we haven't considered, this negative here. And what that, that comes from this is Lenz's law. And Lenz said that uh, any induced voltage, which is this V here, in your loop, or uh, that your loop produces, because um, you'd usually have a wire coming out and that just loop around and then go out the other side, um, but any, any voltage induced in that loop due to the magnetic field is going to be in the direction, so this is a direction indicator, it's going to be in the direction which opposes, it opposes the change that produced it. Um, so this is very cool. Just write that down in detail. So um, the, the induced voltage is going to oppose the change that produced it. So uh, what, what effect this have this has is if you're trying to move this coil into the field you're going to experience a force trying to shove it back out okay so the voltage produced is going to uh, repel the direction that you're you're providing it another uh, another one that you might have seen before is if you've got a coil of wire um, and you take a permanent magnet this is connected to some sort of has to be a closed loop anyway, uh, and you've got a permanent magnet, magnet north-south, and if you push that magnet towards the loop, <coughs> there'll be an induced um, voltage across the wire or coil, or induced current through, depends how you look, look at it, um, which will create a north here to oppose that direction of movement, and it's going to try and thrust it back in the other direction. So you'll feel a force pushing your magnet out or this, um, this coil here will just experience a force pushing it the other way um, or you'll see motion, of the, I should say, um, as the reaction force pointing in that direction repels against the magnet but either way, I think I pressed a button there and something funny happened but um, either way the magnet will be um, re repelled uh, from the coil so there will be equal and opposite force going on for a time there um, you can overcome it and current flows in the circuit and um, that's where induction comes from anyway but very cru crucial, very important um, and uh, yeah, that's electromagnetic induction